19. Fishing the DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. In order to keep Fishing the DMV alive through 2024 and beyond, we need a hundred Patreon subscribers. We are only 19 away from achieving our goal. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Senkos or a Jackhammer Chatterbait, all Patreon members will receive 5% off all of their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle each and every month. You will also get 10% off all of your orders to our newest sponsor, Tiger Crankbaits, who won best in show at the Richmond Fishing Expo. You will also gain membership to our private Facebook group com community where we talk about fishing, what's coming up, and you'll be entered into weekly prize giveaways, private live streams and videos, and so much more. If you would like to see Fishing the DMV continue to bring you content, please think about joining. Link in the episode description. Thank you so much. Do you think you have a badass kayak? Do you think it'll turn a lot of heads? Well, join us Saturday, February 24th at Jake's Bait and Tackle for the second annual kayak show and seminar. Starting at 11 a.m. will be the kayak show. The four categories this year are the DIY division, a kayak that costs less than a thousand bucks, the best river kayak setup, the best big water kayak, and the best in show. You will have a ton of kayaks there to be able to show off. If you want to ever get into kayak fishing, this is the time to go look at so many cool rigs and setups. We will also have a ton of seminars with a bunch of great guests. The first one, starting at noon, will be Mike Ortega of Northern Virginia Kayak Association. At 1 p.m., we'll have Sela Johnson. At 2 p.m., we'll have Jake Harshman. At 3 p.m., we'll have Matt Campbell. And rounding it up at 4 p.m., we'll have Joshua Evans. The overall seminar will be going from 11 a.m. to about 4 to 5 p.m. will be the whole event. If you would like to sign up your kayak, you can me email me, fishingthedmv at gmail.com. Again, if you'd like to sign up your kayak to have a chance to win a ton of cool prizes, email me, fishingthedmv at gmail.com. And we will see you Saturday, February 24th at 11 a.m. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. We are late. As always, because that's just how we roll here. I uh, I sent my I sent my guest the wrong link, and we were both in the wrong chat. So that's a great way to actually start everything off. Uh, please let me know uh, down below how the audio is sounding right now. Uh, we got a ton of announcements. We got so much stuff we have to get through right now before uh, we get to our guest, uh, which gives him a little bit more time because he's getting everything done. He's probably already shot a deer and caught a bunch of smallmouth. So. Uh, we're going to start out with the with a couple of smaller announcements before the big announcement of the day. So the first announcement, number one, is we have the kayak the the second annual kayak fishing extravaganza at Jake's Bait and Tackle. That is happening uh, Saturday, February twenty fourth. We're going to have multiple categories. It goes from eleven a.m. to four p.m. Um, and then he says I got to crank up my audio a little bit. All right, cool. We'll crank that up. That's what I like about, that's why I always got to check with people first before I start talking is like how the audio is. So hopefully that sounds a little bit better there, Shane. Let me know. Um, anywho, we have the Kayak Fishing Expo Extravaganza. It is Saturday, February 24th. It's from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., give or take. You can enter your kayak to win a prize. There is a ton of categories. We have best in show, best big water kayak, best river kayak, and we also have like the best uh, DIY. It has to be under $1,000. Now, what, what does that mean? The kayak itself costs under a thousand dollars. You can spend two or three thousand dollars on it to like pimp it out, but you you had to buy something that was about a thousand bucks that you pimped out. That was always a question. If you would like to enter your kayak into that, please message me fishing the DMV at gmail.com so I can get you in that. We also have a ton of amazing guest speakers. We have, I think we have five this year. Uh, just to give you a hint, a little adorb, we have Jake Harshman, you know. He fishes kayak tournaments. He sells feed picks. He's a really good guy. Sheila Johnson, I think she catches one or two fish. Josh Evans, Mike Ortega, ton of great guest speakers about kayaks. And there's going to be a food truck. There's going to be vendors. And then yours personally will be live streaming the whole thing. So if you want to get into kayaking or if you just want to see kayaks, go on out to this thing. This thing was really, I have to really give a shout out to my neighbor, believe it or not. My neighbor is really big into car shows and he has a pimped out truck. It, it goes really slow to the ground, airbags, all that jazz. And I was like, if you do that for trucks, why couldn't we do that for like kayaks? And that was really the genesis of this whole idea. We're in season two of it. 
At some point, I want to get tricked out John boats also into the mix. So you can have like different categories for like tricked out John boats. I thought that'd be freaking cool. So anyway, that's going to come up. Number two of the announcements, the smaller announcements. Fishing and DMV is going to be at the Augusta County Fishing Expo this coming weekend. It's down uh, past Harrisonburg. We're going to be there. It's a two-day event. We're going to be live streaming the whole thing. Uh, we will be there. I think we're at the front of the store. More information about that to come. And then the big announcement is Fishing and DMV has a brand new sponsor. We are happy to announce that we have partnered with Tiger Crankbaits. So they made this very adorable plaque and i did cry a little bit when they made this thing tiger crank base made this thing for me this little plaque this is how it works if you're a patreon member you receive 10 percent off all of your orders to tiger crankbaits and they also won best in show at the richmond fishing expo tons of boosts people from all over god's earth they won for best crankbait they had this amazing blue crab crankbait design that they made. Absolutely cool. Now, for Patreon members, you receive 10% off. You'll get a QR code, and I just I just uh, uploaded that to Patreon and our private Facebook group, 10% off all your orders to them, plus a ton of other special announcements and little gift giveaways that we're going to be doing with Tiger Crankbaits. So, but I have all these fun baits here, plus I have this bad boy right here. We're going to be giving these away. So, I have two of these square bills that are award-winning that they actually won best in show at Richmond Fishing Expo that are going to be given away tonight to the person that asked the best question. And then after those two crankbaits are gone, we will also be giving away gift cards to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Now, people are done talking to me. You probably want to hear about from Jeff Green. The man, the myth, legend. He is either shooting deer, hunting turkey, or he's catching just monster smell mouth right under our noses. So without further ado, the man, the myth, the legend, Jeff Green. Jeff, how are you doing tonight? Yo! Yo, boss. I haven't seen you since uh, Richmond. Yeah, man. And I'm really it's hoping been, uh, next year... I know. I'm hoping next year that you definitely have a booth down there with us. Oh, I'm going to get a booth at Richmond. I'm going to get a booth... Um, hey, have you ever tried that um, um, East Tennessee show? Hmm. You heard of that one? I have. It's kind of big in, near Knoxville. It's well, I thought about doing that one too. I, I am tickled that you think we're big enough for that. And I think we are going to be bigger. Uh, like I have um, Augusta County reached out to us. We're doing that. I think all of us will just hop in a van and starting in January, we'll just do all the expos. How about that? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to, um, I'm going to try my best to get the ICAST this, uh, this July. ICAST is interesting. Go there. Yeah. Like, I mean, what do you think of ICAST? Do you think, how important is it compared to all the other shows? I think it's real important. Isn't it like um, equivalent to, I mean, I might be uh, getting a little crazy here. Is it like what um, Zima is to car shows? Exactly. It is. It is the absolute. That's how, uh, that's how big it is. It's massive. It's absolutely massive. Um, and I, I, I'm excited to like go again this year. I missed last year. Um, but with that said, Hopefully we get to see you down there, but we're in like, if yeah. I check my watch, it's February. It sucks outside. We're close to spring. How have you been? What have you been up to? Pretty good, man. I haven't fished uh, every day like I want to. Um, I was out a, a few days ago, uh, yesterday, and then a couple days before that. And then whenever else I could get out before it, uh, the water came up and, uh, the, the, the fishing's, um, it's been pretty good. Um, I have, uh, the trips coming up uh, this weekend. I have trips coming up next week and then some more in uh, February. So um, we'll see what happens. Uh, February is a tough month. It's because, um, I mean, it's usually the coldest month of the year. And um, it's just uh, the, the weather's just up and down. What is late February to March like in this time of year? Because I really feel like we're close. We start to see people. Fishing the Bassmasters down in Florida, people are starting to chomp at the bait to fish again. It's that weird pent up energy. Oh uh, well, we'll start getting warmer. You know, it'll start warming up at, at, by the end of February. We'll, we'll start getting more. Uh, you know, as we go into March, and then uh, and it'll kind of level out, and we'll still think it's just cold as can be in March, but it'll be warmer than it was in February and January. Um, 
I think we'll start, you know, you'll stop seeing as many days that are uh, in the 20s. You'll see them in the 30s. And then by the end of March, um, you'll see a big change with the fish. With that said, are they still in their winter patterns when it comes to late February? Yeah. Yep. And then it, and then it just depends on um, the temperature of the water on what kind of pattern in the winter they're in. I mean, they can still be in current and moving around in the current um, if the water's warm enough. I love, I, I have you a don't have to focus. You don't have to focus on um, eddies. That is true. And we're going to be getting into that here in a minute because we have Shane Flint with this amazing comment, which is like, uh, February is big bass month in Virginia. I have to agree. If you guys do not know, I'm trying to get him on the show. There's this mythical beast out there called Matthew McCluskey who just cracked a 40 plus pound bag for five largemouth in Virginia. Um, I don't know if he injected them with steroids or whatever, but so there are big fish is, is to the point, but we'll get back to that. Um, we have so many questions flooding into the stream right now. This is awesome. So guys, Jeff just picked out his favorite baits for this time of year. It's kind of what he likes to throw. Uh, what we're going to do, ask your questions here. The first two questions I pick will win the Richmond Fishing Expo crankbait of the year from Tiger Crankbaits. Um, yep. Yep. For us, absolutely. 44 pounds was how much it was. Absolutely 44 pounds. Now, if you could tell me what pond it was or what lake it was in the comment section down below and why it was the Bass Pro Shop Aquarium, uh, you win a prize as well. Um, anyway, so I have some baits here that I like to throw this time of year. Um, and then Jeff does. So what I'm thinking is while Jeff gets his baits, I will pull out one of the baits sure. I like to throw this time of year and we'll get to it. But so if you guys don't know, every month we do this, uh, what what we throw, it's usually at Jake's Bait and Tackle. Jake's Bait and Tackle is doing a uh, is doing some renovations. Next month, we will be back at doing what's new from Jake's Bait and Tackle, where we have guests and we talk about what we like to throw. Uh, we have Russ, uh, $1 million for that information. I think I have an idea of where that place is. It's a small lake, I, I, but it, this is all that matters to me. It's public. I have this issue when people catch big fish from private lakes. I don't know why. It's just like, it's like when you shoot a buck. If you shoot a buck from a private ranch, it is way different than if you shoot it from public property. It just is. I meant like, and what I mean by that, and everyone's like, what do you mean? It's like, well, so if you shoot a buck from a private preserve where their whole thing is you pay to hunt there, I think that is a little bit different than if you shoot it from public land or private land that's adjacent to public land that's a completely different way where it does and yeah areas jp like private lakes ponds don't count oh, thank you thank you i don't know why it's so weird to say um and it's like i don't care about the spots and this is something i want to put in the comment section down below i'm going to be doing this on a patreon uh, event session later this week by the way you should be able to name the lake 100 percent. so if you say like i caught 44 pounds don't say where on the lake it's like i caught it from the canna the point being, because it, if you say that, it's more it's more impressive. If you said, like, I caught it from Burke Lake, 20 pounds, I'd be like, damn, that is impressive, dude. You did really well. You caught it from Lake Anna. I'd be like, damn, that's really impressive. Again, just that's generically speaking, that would be me. I'm not going to give you the waypoints and how I caught them, but just be like, yeah, this is the body of water. Just It just makes what you did way more impressive when you know where it's from. Uh, anyway, that's just my take on that. We got so many questions here, but I like that. Uh, we got, hi, Big Mike. Yep, guys, ask your questions. The first two questions to win win a crankbait from Tiger Crankbaits. Uh, here we go. We got, what moving bait? We got, we got Jeff Evans here. He says, what moving baits do you prefer on the river this time of year, Jeff and Thomas? That's a pretty good question. I don't know if that's going to work or not. No, Shh. I'm here. All right, you're good there? Okay, cool. And then we got Shane Flynn has a good question here. I don't know if this one's going to win a Tiger Crankbait yet, though. Straight up, telling the lake makes it more impressive, 100%. Jeff, I'm going to ask you this before we talk about baits. If you shot a deer sure. on public land that's a 10-pointer, is that more impressive or less impressive than if you shot a deer on a preserve that you pay to go in there and hunt? No, it's more. It's it's uh, it's cooler to get one on public land. Mm -hmm. a big deer on public land yeah that's more impressive no, i agree and then we got and then you know well it also depends on what kind of private land you're talking about are you talking about like um someone that has 50 acres and they they hunt it you know as a hobby in the you know during the season 
or are you talking about a, a, a deer ranch out, out in Kansas? Which one are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. You literally hit them on the head like a deer ranch, something like that. And we got Russ Hamilton yeah, no, here. I, so. I think it's impressive if you're if you're a landowner and um, you know, you hunt every year, you have property and you go up there and, and you hunt it and, and you do what you need to do and, and you get yourself a big deer. I think that's impressive. I think it's also impressive on public land. But on those on those big um those those uh, places you see on TV, I don't think it's really a big deal. Um, yeah, it's cool probably, but um, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. Oh my God, we have so many questions flooding in. God, everyone loves you, Jeff. All right, first one here though, I want to address is Russ Hamilton. Sure. I'm sure he's going to tell at some point, brother. Um, yes, so uh, Matt, first off, Matt can do whatever he wants. Matt could kill a guy, and I'd respect that at this point. He's earned that in the community, but I know Matt's a straight shooter. I just meant in general. I have had a lot of conversations with people that have not been able to come on the show because they are like, I'm going to Photoshop everything. I do everything, blah, blah, blah. Those are the people I'm talking about, by the way. Matt McCluskey, he's no problem there. No, 100%. I'll be back. But Hold on. Just in general, that's kind of what I mean right there with that, uh, with the whole fishing thing. No, Matt, Matt's a straight shooter, but it was just more of in general when big bags are caught. Because if you guys don't remember, Ross, and you might remember this, in the back of Bassmaster, you'd always have like the lunker section and it'd be like, Private pond, private pond, private pond. It's like, well, shit, this is exciting. Uh, anyway, we got so many questions here. I'm going to highlight all of them here, and then we're going to pick our, some of our windows. Um, so first question here that is going to win a tiger crankbait is David Williams. <laughs> David, you just won a crankbait from Tiger Crankbaits here. Jeff, looking down the road, when would uh -oh. when would be the absolute best time to can you hear me now you there yeah i'm here okay go ahead jeff looking down the road when would be the absolute best time to take young folks kayak fishing in the upper potomac for just flat out catching numbers uh probably may like second week of may there you go yeah especially when that weather like kind of gets like stable Pretty much all of May, but but mostly the second and third week of May. Uh, I, <laughs> Here's my question: What do I have to ask to get a crankbait? Um, come on, man, try harder. You hey, know. I got one. Um, I I got a um, I got a, a suspended jerk bait I can give away. Is that good? Perfect. You get to pick the question you like, and then whatever question you like that I pop on the screen, you give that away. How about that? All right. It's a uh, here. It's a, it's a 100. I use them. Lucky Craft 100. It's oh, legit. It's, it's not like a knockoff. It's an actual Lucky Craft lure. So go ahead. I love that question. Ah, so, okay, here we go. We got a couple more questions here. Uh, here's a good one. You guys are just cranking them out. Okay. Josh Evans, on the Upper Potomac, what technique do you find most productive with the river up like it is? Hmm, probably... Um, Sticking with plastics. Ooh. Um, right here. Go for it. There she is. Two and three quarter inch tube. What color is that, by the way? Green pumpkin. It's just got some um, little salt on it. Little two and three quarter inch tube on a one eighth jig head. The ones I make, the SWFA two and three quarter inch tubes. Throw a tube. And if By you the find that they're hitting those things when they're um, when you're moving them, and you know they're falling the second they hit the bottom, I would go with um, I would go with someone that's moving in the colder water, and I'd go with a, a suspending jerk bait. I think that would have to do with Jeff's connection right there. So hopefully we got him dialed in right there with that. Can you hear I'm me? Back. There we go. I'm back. God bless the internet. Where do you the, uh, live, by the, the way? Is it in a bunker? Us, man. Do you live in a bunker? No, no, no. I'm just out in the garage, man. This is where I this is where I do my stuff. Oh, I fantastic. Have, uh, I have I have service out here. Yeah, this is the problem with Wi-Fi. Once we have the ability, we I promise everyone here we're gonna move not out of the boonies. We have one neighbor. That's it. We live in the boonies. Every time I drive home, there's a banjo playing. 
There is a creek. It's Conakage Creek, which is pretty dope. But yeah, we do see Bigfoot every time we go in I and mean, out I don't of like where the we are. I like the fact that my closest, the per closest house is 100 yards from me through the woods. Yeah, well, I, but, but at least you have internet connection. We barely have internet connection here. It's a miracle I can actually run this show, honestly. It's just absolutely crazy. So anyway, we're going to continue with the show here. We're going to answer some questions while Jeff gets going right now. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to announce our next big winner. I'm in the show, it says. All right, awesome. Yeah, all I right. know he dropped. Uh, we got Dan here. Okay, we got that one question right there. I'm saving all the questions till the end. Jeff, go for it. What is your first bait? First bait. Let's go with the um, let's go with the suspending jerk bait. Uh, my my three favorite brands are uh, Rapala. We'll go with uh, price from cheapest to highest price. Rapala, um, the Husky Jerks, and the um, here. Let me see. Husky jerks are a really good crankbait, and that actually gets me into my crankbaits, my jerk baits here. The husky jerks, the uh, X wraps. This is an X wrap eight, whatever the husky jerk uh, size is that's equivalent to it. And then um, your lucky craft, a pointer seventy eight, actually uh, pointer sixty five, a pointer seventy eight, and a pointer one hundred. And um, that's that one I was showing you. That's a pointer 100. Right Why the there. blue? Uh, it's, it's silver and blue. It's, it's a good color. I just like it. And then um, this is kind of a way off of that color. But for whatever reason on the Potomac, they like this uh, yellow perch looking color, even though there's no yellow perch on the upper Potomac. I really think it has to do with that chartreuse. I had somebody reach out to me a while ago and talk to me about that. And... Um... Hold on. Oh, and then the last, uh, the last uh, jerk bait is the uh, Mega Bass. Which one? The One Ten Junior. And pick your poison on color. I like anything that's natural color. So, clown color I like right here. Yeah. With that hot chartreuse. Oh, I don't yeah, know I why. Like clown. Is that a, is that a uh, is that a X wrap eight? Dude, well done. Yes, it is. I like what well, people don't understand with us fishermen. This is like us tasting wine as we like hold these up and we're like, is that the clown? It's like, it is. Um, the jackal, this is the deep diving jackal. I really, guys, I got teeth marks. When it's a little bit deeper, I just like that. It's got that weird, like that shimmy to it, that shine. I really like that. And how on, the, on those, uh, when I'm talking about jerk baits, I'm talking about um, suspending jerk baits, everyone. Don't there go out go. and get a um, a Rapala jerk bait that sinks or or um, uh, surfaces. You want one that suspends. And here's here's mine. Here's another one I have. This is a gold Lucky Craft. I like having. Oh, hey, I lost that. Hey, I lost that exact color to a muskie last year. Dude, this color is so hot. It was I don't know why. One hundred. That sucker, yes. I, I saw him come up and grab it, and that was the end of it. We got TP with a good question right here. There are yellow perch in the Upper Potomac. I've caught them below Dam 5. I did not know that. Hmm. We got, okay, so before we get to Jeff's baits, I literally have uh, 10,000 questions. Uh, Carly Bird says, you should do a segment where you guys, where your guest has to name the kind of bait, color, and name of the brand. That would be a hell, I'm going to write that down, actually. That's a great idea, almost like a wine tasting. <laughs> Um, I got to come through here though and figure out who our next winner is. Big Mike, you just want a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Big Mike, uh, Mr. Green, if you had to pick a color tube for largemouth, what would it be? Color tube for largemouth? I mean, I don't really go after largemouth, but um, probably the uh, green pumpkin. There you go. You got that. And then we got this one That'd right be here my from. Start. JP, oh, okay. I'm sorry, Chris Porter. For winter fishing, is a rattle trap or jerk bait more productive? Jerk bait. Jerk bait. Chris yeah. Porter, you just want a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Congratulations, sir. Um, and then we got. I'm probably gonna pick right here. This is gonna be our next winner. Uh oh, I gotta pick our next winner. Actually, no, I'm gonna have you pick another winner. Let's go. Here's a good question. 
We got from Chris Nicholson. My cousin and I took a Potomac trip with Jeff last year, and I'm eager to try the Susquehanna for the first time. I won't ask which is better, but are there seasonal differences between the two fisheries? Seasonal differences? Um, meaning, um, do they fish differently in the different seasons? Is that what we're talking about? Is the Susquehanna always better than the Potomac, or is it? Di is there different times where oh, the Potomac's oh. better? Well, um, I think they both fish really well, but the Susquehanna has uh, just a, an enormous amount of fish, number-wise. Just an absolute enormous amount of fish. I mean, they're just, it's just incredible. Um, it, just, it just depends. I like both of them. I, I, don't, I can't really um, tell you. It depends on what day you're going. Um, but I can tell you, I, I think the uh, Upper Potomac River has uh, just absolutely enormous smallmouth, river smallmouth, just giant river smallmouth. It's, um, uh, it's a reoccurring thing to catch a 20-inch smallmouth on the Upper Potomac River. That's freaking insane, dude. Um, and that fish, depending on the time of year, that fish weighs anywhere between four and a half and um, a little over five pounds. Hmm. We got so many more questions to get through right now. Um, we got David here, the 110 Junior Morning Glory Smokesome. Yep, that's a really good color jerk bait as well. Uh, William Barnes, yes, there are yellow perch in the Upper Potomac, but their population is not that large. I didn't, I didn't know that. That's pretty dope. There must be like it must be like a really small thing. We got JP again. Uh, Susquehanna is better, but Upper Potomac is underrated in my opinion. I think, and this is the this is my opinion here. This is my opinion here. I think the Susquehanna is much larger, better volume, better quantity, but it's the same thing. If you want to catch a big fish, if you go to a super big lake, your percentage chance of catching a record is hard. You want to go to a smaller place. I think you have a, you have a higher probability of catching a 20 plus an incher on the Potomac, but you have a better probability of catching like a really good bag on the Susquehanna. So you probably will run into one 20 plus incher on the Potomac a lot easier than the Susquehanna. Again, that's just my thoughts. Uh, let me see. Here we go. Carl, uh, you have no idea how to say this name. Carly Esterly Photography. For a newbie to the Potomac River, where would you start in the spring? You, if it's okay, could this person win your bait? Sure. Congratulations. Why not? You just want a jerk bait from Shallow Water Fishing Adventures. Uh, please message Shallow Water Fishing Adventures and let them know your your handle, and you can receive your prize. Congratulations! Yeah, hey, have him email me at shallowwaterfishingadventures at gmail .com. Boom! There you go, guys. Go. So anyway, the question for you, Jeff, for a newbie to the Potomac River, where would you start in the spring? Where would you start in the spring? Yippers. Um. Does this person have a boat? Well, how about we answer the question twice? Let's go without a boat and with a boat. Hmm. Well, probably somewhere up around um, Harper's Ferry would be a good spot. Why? Because that's where they tend to be. Kayak. We do have a kayak. So she yep, just said okay. kayak. Well, maybe not Harper's Ferry because that's uh, white water. I thought maybe if they were awaiting, um, probably, uh, the, uh, I would start at, you know, you know, where Seneca Creek is in that area in the Leesburg, the Leesburg area of the upper Potomac river. And then down below, um, dam two, you guys ever heard of violets lock? No. Violets lock, Pennyfield lock, those areas. That's, I did not know about that place. That's pretty cool. It's we below have, dam too. There you go. And then uh, you just won a a bait from Shallow Water Fishing Adventures. If you did not hear, please message them and you can re reclaim your bait. Uh, we got so many questions here. Okay. You are so famous right now. It's insane. Hmm. Let me scroll back. We have over 50. It feels good. I'm telling you. We I'm have Taylor Swift of fishing. Yeah, we have 70 people watching right now on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. All right. I know. I'm going to hold on to this last bait right here, guys. I'm going to hold on to the very end. Okay, you got to keep asking the questions. We're going to find a good one. We're going to find a good one here. Now, there's one that keeps going on. There are yellow perch there. Okay, there's one question I just lost. And this is why usually I have somebody that like checks the chat for me to help me like keep everything like clean. But I'm going to go back. Here we go. There it is. 
So, Michael, you just won a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. What is the official area known as the Upper Potomac River? I am between Harper's Ferry and Shepherdstown. That is a fascinating it's below, question. It's, it's above, well, you're going to hear a lot of people say, but it's above um, anything above uh, Great Falls. I really think that too, because it's like, I think it's basically, this is where I think it's non title versus title is a better that's way of looking what it at is. it. That, I, I don't understand why people, um, uh, that, that's, that's what it is. It's, it's anything above Great Falls. I don't know why people have a problem with that, but it's anywhere above. I don't even fish near Great Falls. I, I fish above Dam 2, too, but um, I fish all the way up around Dam 4 and down, down below Brunswick, all those areas. But, uh, yeah, it's anything above uh, Great Falls. And then uh, Chris Porter, please, you did win a gift card at Jake's Paint and Tackle. Please uh, reach out to me on Instagram, Facebook, or email me, fishingdmv at gmail.com. So, uh, Jeff, do you have another bait that you like to throw this time of year? Another bait I like to throw is um, the uh, TRD, the Z-Man TRD Tickler. Stand by, right there. What color? Uh, right now I have a uh, Canada crawl cause I'm out of green pumpkin. Ooh, I like the color a lot. Um, oh, and that copper truce, but Hey, did I answer that question for the person that was asking about the upper Potomac? You so did anything above great falls. And then we got another question here too. We got, uh, what pound line gets the best crankbait action? Andy, I think that's um, all on uh, personal preference. If I'm throwing crankbaits, I'm probably throwing a 10-pound um, uh, or 12-pound uh, line. It's just the bigger bait. You're probably going to catch bigger fish. And yeah. um, it's either going to be on uh, monofilament or um, uh, what's the other stuff? Help me here real quick. Uh, my mind went blank. Braid, mono, and fluorocarbon. And then the other one now. Copper polymer? Copolymer. 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 And then people are going to ask, well, why? Right? Well, why is because um, I like using those bait or those uh, those lines because those lines float, number one. Ah. And then some people are, well, uh, people like throwing, uh, but people in lakes throw them with uh, heavy fluorocarbon. Well, that helps them sink. You don't want your bait sinking in the river. They're going to snag rocks. So... I would use 10 to 12 pound monofilament or copolymer line. And then you want to tie it to a, uh, you want, you want that line to be a leader line to, to braid. And that, and that leader line should be about a, a rod's length. So your rod should be anywhere between six and a half to seven feet long. If you're fishing on the river for smallmouth. That's an insane length of leader. And then, um, that, uh, that line, when those fish hit it, that line stretches, it's kind of like a shock, shock absor uh, absorber. And it, um, I think it helps keep that hook in their mouth. Yeah, that's it's always a weird thing when it comes to line size. Now, again, but that's my I, opinion. And generally speaking, just to kind of like cap off the question, the lighter the line you use, the more action you get out of the bait, the more depth you get out of the bait. The heavier the line, it restricts the action, it restricts the depth. So, and the, and, uh, and the um, copolymer and the uh, monofilament. Here's another reason why I think it works good is because it's very abrasion resistant. So you're running it, running a crankbait, and you're hitting rocks and dragging it on the bottom. Dra Maybe you um, you hit a, a log or a rock real quick, and grind that bait up against the rock, or the um, bait feels like it's it's hung up, and then it comes loose again. It's just getting beat up. Fluorocarbon doesn't have that same abrasion resistance. I don't know what they talk about when they say that. Uh, Fluorocarbon's just much more finesse. It really is, and we have a great. This is for Jeff. If you oh. could choose between Bill Dance or Taylor Swift to take fishing, who would you choose? Ah, Bill Dance, man. He's a legend. Taylor hey, Swift. I commented on one of my Instagram photos one time. It wasn't the fake Bill Dance. It was a real Bill, uh, the real Bill, uh, Bill Dance. Okay, well, we, well, you're simping for Bill. It doesn't count. I, I would take out Taylor Swift when she was hot, not when she's like 35 years old or 38 years old. Um, and I she's younger out, than that, man. I thought she's 35. That's Let me know like in chat. 15 years younger than me. Well, how old are you? Anyway, so 45. <laughs> whole other thing. You said you're 25. You look great. 45. Oh, 45. I thought you said 25. <laughs> it's like Jesus. 
What cream are you Rub using? Rub out there, man, on the river. <laughs> Russ wants to know, what's your biggest five fish limit on the Susky or the Upper Potomac? Mm -hmm. Over 20 pounds. Damn. Have you ever caught 22 plus pounds? No. Not not off the top of my head, no. I think I would remember that. But no, it's it's got to be right, right around 20, 20 pounds. And then you've got Joshua Evans here. Travis Meyer. Oh, I know what I'd be throwing, but I always try to learn from the best. Um, other Ooh. thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be throwing will be, I don't have it here. It's in the boat. That's the problem with not having actually a legit setup. Um, I would go with a hair jig would be one of the baits. I will go with a glide bait because I will always have a glide bait tied on now. A jerk bait and a, I mean, I keep, I keep kicking guys' asses on this thing. This is my little secret here. I, and people say, Tom, why do you give away your secrets like this? Because people are too stupid and they won't throw it. Spy bait. Spy bait, um, I throw this with a little bit heavier line to keep it up in the water column. If they're not hitting a jerk bait, they're going to hit a spy bait. And guys, I'll keep showing you this and you won't throw it and I'll take your money. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. I'll just keep doing it this way. So throw that's another bait throw. Or a Ned Brig. <laughs> Ned Brig I'll always have tied on as well. That's an absolute killer. And a wacky worm this time of year works really good too. Um, we got another great question here is TP, is Taylor Swift hot? I, eh, eh. I think she's great for women that want to break up with people. Honestly. Um, th these, these are the hard hitting questions of our lifetime right here, ladies and gentlemen. These are tough questions. These really are tough questions. These are um, questions that should be answered behind closed doors. They really should with alcohol. Uh, Jeff, is there a time of year or condition where you prefer the husky jerk to other jerk baits? I've heard it excels in the coldest water. No, I just, um, uh, I'll sometimes throw different ones throughout the day. And then um, whichever one I think is working the best, I'll stick with it. But do, do I think it outfishes the X wrap? I don't, I don't think so. Um, it just depends, and um, I think it has different because I think it has different action. It's got to have different action. It's different than the uh, X wrap. It's different than the Lucky Craft, and it's different than the Mega Bass. So I, it, it just all depends, and and then and then these baits, and it depends on the uh, the the brand you have and how well it's suspending in that temperature of water. I mean, there's so many variables involved in it. Oh, dude, there's so many variables about this. Guys, also listen to the Billy Coles episode about this. We go way in depth on this. We still have over 60 people watching on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Y'all are insane as we keep giving stuff away. I'm going to have to be stopped here before I go bankrupt. Uh, we got, what's your opinion on the new Berkeley Craig? I think, oh, God, you're going to hate this. I think it's, you know what they did? So I... I talked to a couple of big time YouTubers and they showed me a video of this. SB caught a big limit on that. And I looked at shimmy. I was like, that's a spy bait. It's a spy bait shimmy that goes backwards is what it is. And, and they were like, Oh shit, you're right. It's basically that it, it's a spy bait shimmy that goes backwards. The difference is Berkeley has enough money to sell it and they push it on the media. Do I think it works 100%? The only difference between a spy bait and that is that that backs up a little bit, but the shimmy's absolutely the same. And I'm actually glad it came to market because it means these won't get pushed as much with people. We got another one. Uh, JP, congratulations. You just won the last. You just won the last crankbait from Tiger Crankbaits. This is their game changing Richmond winning cover. Congratulations. And this question is. Thanks, uh, uh, Jeff. I haven't had much experience with the Husky Jerk. I find the Pointer does better for me in super cold water than the Mega Bass. They suspend better in super cold than the Mega Bass. Boom. Well, the, uh, here's, a, here's the plus to the Her Husky Jerk as well. You can find a Husky Jerk in Walmart. Yes. And uh, they're also um, they're the least expensive out of all four jerk baits that I've spoke about. I 100% agree that there's still some great, like, you know, I still like gulp and trout mag and stuff like that. And you can get that. Where I buy my drop shot weights from is Walmart because I buy those catfish weights because I don't care if I lose them, honestly. Um, JP again with a great, oh, wait, wrong one. 
I can't read. Sorry. Uh, JP, Thomas, are you throwing that spy bait on the upper Potomac just this time of year or year round? When do you like to throw them? So I just did, I would, one of the Patreon videos I do for my Patreons is I will do a two hour mat, like deep dive on a bait. But to Cliff note it, this is a swim bait with a treble hook on the back. If you get them nipping a swim bait or a jerk bait, always have this tied on because all this thing does, it has two actions. It shimmies like this through the water column or when you're with schooling fish, which is what that new Berkeley bait is for, suspended or uh, schooling fish, it'll shimmy down like this. It'll shimmy down or it shimmies when you reel it. But the difference is it has a treble hook pulled off the back of it. So when you have fish that are nipping a swim bait or a jerk bait, if they nip this, they get stuck every time. That is why I always have this on no matter the time of year. I get maximum casting distance. This thing throws like a lead pencil. And if I get them nipping my swim bait tail because they're biting the swim bait tail, I always go straight to this before jerk bait because there's a trailer hook where the swim bait fin would be. And you'll usually get a commitment in the bite. So I hope that actually helps her with that. Anyway, let's move on here. S Michael. Someone told me today that they have been catching snakehead in Harper's Ferry area. Is that true? I don't know. I've heard rumors from the Department of Wildlife or Natural Resources, because Maryland's Natural Resources, that they're there, but I have no idea. Um, I haven't seen one myself, and I haven't seen pictures, but I've heard the rumors of it. Hmm. I've never seen one on the Potomac either. Hell nah. Are you? Oh, I'm sorry. Josh Evans is responding to TP who said her attitude kills Taylor Swift's physical attributes. There's physical attributes will always trump attitude. You can have a terrible attitude, but as long as you have great physical attributes, there's a Venn diagram that was actually created about that TP. Look that up. Uh, let's see. We got here. You are correct. I know. Um, good information, brother. And as always, guys, also the, uh, the Augusta County Fish Expo that is next weekend. We will be live streaming from there as well. JP, again, it's a copy of the Jackal Riser bait, actually. What? It, wait, did I miss a question for you? Yes, I think. Oh, you're talking about the uh, Berkeley. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I've had success throwing the spy bait in lakes, but I haven't tried throwing it in rivers. Scared I'm going to snag it. So here's the key. You're throwing this thing on 20 pound test, throw it on the heaviest shit you can get away with. Monofilament is actually better because you want it to actually rise up. But Jackal actually is coming out with, I don't know if it's now that it's out or in the spring, a shallow water version of this, but I always throw it on super duper heavy stuff just to get it to, just to get it to float up off the bottom to get it a little bit higher. Uh, so hope that actually helps. Um, we got another question here, here from Daryl. That was all that was also info on the spy bait. Thank you for the help. Absolutely, sir. And then haven't seen any snakeheads up here. Have seen some big freshwater eels caught near Harper's Ferry. Bullshit, Josh. I need pictures. Have you ever caught the American an eel? eel lives in the upper Potomac River? Really? It's a native species. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's pretty yeah. cool. I just learned something. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, there's a um there's a pretty cool story about a guy that used to be the uh, many uh, like years and many, many years ago when people were living in those lock houses. And um, he claims he caught hundreds of them in one night. It's 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 up there at, I think, at Dam five on the uh, on those historical, um, you know, the little things you can read. So that's so freaking cool. That's really cool. I still want to fish a tournament with you. The That'd biggest one I've ever seen, I've ever seen is about three feet long. Some guy had it in a bucket. Really? You can eat it. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I've never Matthew, it they are seeing more eels on the Susquehanna too. Ugh. I've seen them on the Susquehanna too. No, hard no to that. Hard no to that. Uh, we got Andy again. What's the largest smallmouth you have ever caught? Jeff, you go first. There's one, um, it was, uh, over 22 inches. So it was over six pounds. That's insane. Yeah. That's it was so a big one. Not sure I could eat it. Well, in Japan they do. Konnichiwa. 
Uh, yep, the Amish dudes were catching them and throwing them in buckets with their other catches. I never, I just, wow. I guess they'll eat anything. Um, Eels and Epic kept talking for decades. That's really cool. I got that question. I'm going to say that one for later. Um, honestly, what, and you know, we, we, we branded this episode a fishing report, and I honestly never asked you that question. Have you been fishing lately? Yeah, no, we were talking about it. Yeah, I've been fishing when I, whenever I can get out, whenever the uh, boat ramps aren't closed because of high water and the water's not 33 degrees. Um, yeah, you know, that's that doesn't bad. happen every winter. Some, some winters, are, winters are a lot more mild than others. And when I've been fishing, I've been catching them on when I showed you those ticklers. Yes. The um, uh, tubes. These tubes, I have um, number one hooks in them, too, by the way. That's what you want, a jig head with number one hooks. I have those for sale, too. But anyways, and you also try these. The wow. baby goat. The Z-Man baby goats. Has anyone ever seen those? Mm -mm. I haven't. I mean, there's, I mean, there's nothing real fancy about them. They kind of look like crawdads, actually. And they're two and three quarter inches long. Right here. So just like the feet just kick, just like that. Yeah, and then, but you're gonna fish them on the bottom. Oh, that's pretty cool. Wow. So, um, and then also the uh, the jerk bait. The suspending jerk bait. I have been catching them on those. Um, I don't know if uh, Lucky Craft. I haven't seen them for sale, and I buy I buy it directly from Lucky Craft because I sell them. I haven't seen those uh, yellow perch uh, lures for sale in a while. Uh, they used to be called like Aurora perch or something like that. I haven't seen them. We have a comment here on Instagram. Again, uh, StreamYard, if you could really share comments and views on Instagram, that'd be really helpful. But anyway, we have like 59 people watching. No, 56 now. Uh -oh, uh, someone dropped off. Yeah, but uh, anyway, the question is from Fisher2371. Fisher2371, you just want a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Please, me please message me. Are you also fishing your jerk baits on braid to mono or braid to copper or braid to fluorocarbon no braid to mono braid to mono there you go got andy again i like the z-man baits but hate having to keep them separate from the other plastics i mean is, is it really that big a deal uh, for how great they are yeah hey this is the this is um i had i learned this the hard way too but uh the best way to keep them is keep them by themselves and here let me show you something Oh, he can show us the juice, guys. We got Josh Evans too while he's talking. In the summer, Either you can also hey, rig the baby no joke, full man. size goat. Ooh. If you have you. um if you have Z Man, you should have one of these packs. This is the smaller of, of them all. And you should have one of these binders. Not a pack, a binder that keeps your Z Man baits. Because they have the uh, holes cut in them so that you can organize them. That's pretty cool. That's what you want. Let's put a trouble hook in my body. That's really freaking cool. All right, let's see. We've got so many questions here. We want to basically make sure we uh, don't go too long. Um, I I think I think it was the guy that eels were on the other where he smoked them. I don't know if he's still around. That's a really good question. Jeff loves the French tickler. Yes, he does. Yes, yeah, he does. Yeah, Alex, what's up, man? So. When do you think the springtime really will come here? Like, what's the first stage of spring when it comes to air temperatures? It could be late March. They're going to start being on the move. They're going to make their journey to their spawning spots. It takes That's a while. A, okay, but then you say late March, but then we have a month then until then. W yeah, will there be any moving, changes? Man. Yeah. Got to get on them. Late March, it starts. What about early March? What are they doing in early March? It's still winter. Hmm. Interesting. There's a whole month, man. April. Yeah, they're, I just feel they're, like... um, they're just kind of uh, they're getting ready. They're getting ready to move for uh, that um, that spawn. I just feel like hey. the daylight has something to do with it as well. I'm sure it does. Like the I don't longer think they, they don't fully commit until late late April. Yeah, because like the longer I live, the more I think like 
there's there's stages of winter, like there's stages of spring. So I think late February, early March, those fish are gearing up to get into pre-spawn. They're kind of hinting at it. That's why you see so many big bags in February like taken. And then late March into April is like gangbusters. Yeah. Here we go. TP. That baby goat tip as of topwater lure is legit. Works like a charm over grass, 100%. Um, here we go. David Van Doren, you just want a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Uh, what's Jeff's favorite month to fish? Favorite month to fish? Hmm. Probably October. Why? October is my favorite month of the year to begin with. I love um, uh, just right around Halloween. I know Halloween is the end of the month, but, you know, those last two weeks of October, everything's changing. The leaves start turning. I like that time of year. It's not that hot. It's not that cold. Um, late November to December. Um, I, it's my favorite time in general because there's like nobody on the water. I feel like January's hit or miss when it comes to like big fish and good weather. February, you get a lot of people that start getting on the water because they're restless. And then March, April, May, like it just it's just crazy. But November through December is weird because everyone's not in the fishing mindset. They're hunting. It's Christmas. It's the holidays. So you can basically go to any lake you want between November and December, generally speaking, and it's yours. Yeah, you're I mean, right. November November's a good month too now. But um you're right about that. It's it seems like uh people lose interest in a lot of things around the holidays, don't they? Other than, you know, the holidays. But Doing I agree your, with um, you. Family things. If you want to catch a big one or just catch a bunch, October is like legit. I just mean like if you just want to get out with nobody on the water. When I went with you, it was November. Cold as shit. It was, it was cold that day, wasn't it? It was nasty. It was nasty. But it was just us. Nobody else was yeah. on the water. We had the whole river to ourselves. Yeah. So that's what I like about that. Uh, ooh, here we go. Got another great question here uh, from Andy. Spinning or bait caster, which do you like best? If you're going to go after river smallmouth, spinning rods, first and foremost. Hmm. Why? Because that's it's it's mostly finesse. You can use, uh, I mean, if, if you want to, you can use uh, bait casters, but you can't throw a 16th ounce uh, um, jig head on a bait caster. I mean, they have those new bait casters out, but what are they called, BFS? Yep, that's what I did. Oh. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess if you want to throw one of those, you can't. But I prefer, um, I also guide, and not everyone can throw baitcaster. So um, I prefer uh, spinning spinning tackle. All day, baby. Like, I, I love spinning. I love, I love BFS. I love all that stuff. We have uh, another great question. Where to go? I've got Joshua Evans. Uh, first three weeks of April is absolute favorite time to fish. Honestly, I'll say this, like, I will fish anytime, anywhere. It don't matter to me. But Josh, that, that is really good. Josh, by the way, is going to be one of our speakers at the kayak fishing extravaganza year two at Jake's Bait and Tackle, February 24th at Saturday. Come on, show up, be there, see it. Um, we got, I think we got caught up on all of the questions on Facebook and YouTube, I believe, and we still have an insane amount of people. We have another question from Fisher2371 on Instagram. Spring coincides with the shad run, and I caught shad in mid to late February last spring, warm Feb last year for sure. A hundred, dude, a hundred percent. Especially if you live on the James or the Tidal Potomac, the Shad Run definitely gets in there. We got happy little, uh, we got happy little uh, toadstools. He's got another question on Instagram. Best three starter lures or bait setups for a newbie or a kiddo. Happy little toadstools. You just want a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Please message me on Instagram, Facebook, or uh, YouTube, and I will make sure to get that to you. So anyway, Jeff, best three yeah. starter lures for a kid. Um, lures? Yep. Probably a Cinco, a Fluke. No, 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 a Cinco. A Cinco number one, um, a Ned Rig, and let's go with a like a hard bait. Probably a uh, topwater bait. Those three baits are really hard to snag. Basically, anything with treble hooks. Yeah, a, um, 
a top water bait if you're for for kids, especially if they're biting top water, it it can uh, you know, it, it can keep them interested. Um, Cinco, three inch and four inch Cinco on the river, you can't beat that in the summertime. And then the um, what was the other one I said? Cinco. Oh no, the uh, the um, Ned rig. Oh yeah, you can't. And in the summertime and stuff, you really can't fish them. You know, as long as they're in the water and you're and you're putting them on the bottom somehow, some way, you'll probably catch some fish. I 100% agree with all that. Um, we got another question here. Josh Burns. Thomas, what BFS uh, setup are you running? I am an ultralight tackle junkie and I have always wondered about BFS. Any thoughts would be appreciated. Uh, Josh, you were also a Patreon subscriber, so I'll also reach out to you privately to really answer your question or email me, respond, and I'll get into that. But generally speaking, I think BFS is also a mindset. So if you are pitching and flipping and you usually do on 30, 15 pound test would be considered BFS. But I have two setups. I have an ultralight bait casting rod that I bought from Lucky 18 Outfitters, I believe is the name. Um, really good company. And I pair that up with the Shimano BFS reel and I have eight pound test. I also have a Phoenix medium light bait casting rod with a Shimano BFS setup as well. That one right there, I usually run about eight pound test with that. Both of those rods are fantastic. I will throw spy baits on them, little jerk baits and crank baits. I'll also throw Ned rigs, letter Ned rigs on that thing. When I went with Jeff and we had our really great day out there, I did a beefed up BFS setup, which was a medium um, Phoenix rod with 14 pound fluorocarbon to a Ned rig on a jig. Oh, was that that pink rod you took out with us? Yepers. That's what I, I did. Was, was it pink? I was it, kidding. But what I did was the reason I did that is I could use a little bit heavier line. And anytime I felt a bite, I would set the hook. And if I hit a stump, I didn't care or a tree because I just pull it in. If I had braid to a leader, I'd be breaking off left and right. But with that setup, because it was just straight fluorocarbon, it was like 14 pound test, I could pull on a little bit harder. And in the winter time, that means you can set the hook more, which means you're going to get bit more and you're going to have more bites. Uh, we, got, we got Alex Joe, Alex Joy, Alex Joy, sorry. Real men have washed down pumps on their boats. <laughs> Damn. He's shots crazy. Fired. He's crazy. Hey, Alex, come to the river and I'll spray you with mine. There you go, guys. There you go. Shots fired right there. Uh, let's get back over here to Instagram. Uh, anytime, anywhere, definitely. Uh, Fisher, oh, hey, hey, Alex, also, you'll like to know, I went to use it the other day, and um, apparently the cold weather has cracked it, and it went all over the boat when I turned it on. Oh, my gosh. So there you go. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. All right, we're going to be finishing up here soon, guys. I have one more giveaway announcement here. This is from Tiger Crankbaits. This is their blueback hand-painted glide bait right here. So... The next person to sign up for my Patreon will receive this with another bonus gift. The next person to sign up for the Fishing DV Patreon will win the Tiger Crankbaits Glide Bait, and this will be delivered to you as well. Uh, Alex Joy has a great question here. Uh, what's a good glove for winter fishing? Glove for winter fishing? Um, hey, Alex, why don't you just go to my website? I sell some. <laughs> um I, I, I do actually sell a, a glove that I like using in the, in the wintertime on, um, on the, on the jet boat, but, um, I don't really use gloves when I'm fishing, uh, probably something that doesn't have, um, uh, that has the fingers cut off of it would be the best, uh, or a glove that, um, you know, that's pretty tight on your hand that allows you to, um, uh, feel you know, the, um, uh, the rod and reel better. I don't know. What, what's your opinion on that? I have an old pair of Sims gloves that are completely waterproof, but the thumb and the, the two important fingers can like pop off. Uh -huh. And so I have that available. If I'm throwing a winding bait, I have completely, I'm, my hands are completely gloved, crank bait, jerk bait, something like that. If I'm doing something that's on the bottom, I'm going to probably remove the glove and I'm going to put it in my back pocket so I can actually feel it. And listen, if I catch hypothermia, frostbite, it's just, it's what has to be done to make sure yeah, we I actually catch fish. Gloves. I, I usually, um, the only time I have gloves on is when I'm moving up and down the river. And then um, I, I take them off and I'm using, uh, I don't have gloves on. I so. have 
I have big time ski gloves mitts I'll wear when I'm driving my my Ranger. And I also, I don't know how people feel about this because I know some people think it's like it's a it's a health issue, but I have a motorcycle helmet that I finally bought in college that I wear when I drive the boat. Because if I have that thing on, whether it's raining or it's super cold, I'm not gonna get anything in my face and I can see okay. If I get thrown from the boat, 50-50 chance I die, but I'm comfortable. <laughs> So I guess that's what that's what matters. And they have those masks you can buy. The problem is then your then the lower part of your face is like cold. You can't feel your face. You talk weird. I don't know. But no, I'm talking about just right. You're not running the boat. I forget face something. It's called. What Literally. are you talking about? There's a there's a mask you can buy. It almost looks like a paintball mask. Huh. And they they make them for um for for uh, boats. I did not know about this. I got to yeah. look at that. Actually, that's actually really Something cool face. I forget what it's called. Someone on here that's watching might, might know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm going to actually, I'm going to, I'm going to look real quick to see if I can find it. Um, I don't know if they still make them though. Face shield. Yep. There we go. Yeah, there Last go. time was on face shield. Um, okay. The next question is if you can tell me what beard oil uh matthew mccluskey uses before he goes fishing you win a gift card to jake's bait and tackle tell me the beard oil matthew mccluskey uses before he goes fishing and uh you automatically win a gift card to jake's bait and tackle if you answer that question correctly i judge you very harshly just 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 to let you know uh we've got one more question here where'd it go i think it's on is it on instagram let's see oh here we go Got another great one here from uh, Fish, Fisher2371. I suggest you come on over to YouTube. It makes your life so much easier and you can win prizes easier here. But it is spring cone. Uh, is it a wrong one there. Oh, there it is. Another great question here from Alex Rocco. Save Face is the name of a brand. Save Face is the name of the brand. The other question I have here also on the old Instagram for Jeff is right now, this time of year, when do you start using crankbaits? Going from now into the springtime, when do you start using crankbaits? Probably uh, when once you get the water um, up around sixty degrees and it's no longer going down. So whenever <laughs> that that's going to be, probably late April. And what color are you going to go with? Um, let me see. Hold on. Let me see what I like here. Give you a, give you a. Uh, Inappropriate answers only would make that question so much more fun. Are you talking for beard oil? Happy little toad souls. Is that what you're talking about? Beard oil? Yeah, that would make that way better. Um, hey, here's um, here's three colors I like. All right, but the, the, these are KVDs, but I like these too. But um, something that's uh, you see that color? See how it's brown? Oh my god, I love that color. Something just like that. This one's called. Uh, um. Go figure, but it's called Brown Crawl. All right. <laughs> We've got, wait for it. It's chartreuse and black. Black back chartreuse. And this one right here is an interesting one right here. I don't know why they came up with the name for it like they did, but um, see this color right here? Delta it's Crawl. on my website at times. You'll, you'll see it pop up. It just, it looks real good when there's, um, pictures of it online and everything is that but Delta this Crawl? one right here and these are just uh these are one these are 1.0s i also have 1.5s too but um right. that's this is called phantom watermelon red crawl shit i don't own that one i might have to buy that color i, I have, have this one here what's this color i don't know delta crawl from delta same crawl. i have those Oh, you got those? Yeah, but, that's, but that's Lucky Craft, right? Uh, Lucky Craft and also uh, uh, Striking. And then I believe this is the same crank, but that you just showed, but this is a 1.0. Yeah, that's what I have. That's what I just showed, yeah. that size, yep. There's so many people asking about Matthew McCluskey's beard oil. Is it smelly jelly? I think it actually could be smelly jelly, Ross. That's a really good idea. We got uh, David here. Matthew McCluskey actually puts a Vaseline in his beard before he actually goes out and catches 40 pounds. That's a really good thought there. Um, Andy uh, Leonard, is it Viking Revolution beard oil that Matthew McCluskey puts in his, his mane before he goes out there and sticks it to him? 
Who knows? Who knows? But I am got a feeling I'm going to get that question answered, and then you will win a gift card. Here's this color too. I was going to show you guys. This is a this is a popular color too. This is called Hot Steel, and only um, Rapala, I believe. Uh, Hot Steel. Produced. That one I really like that that color. At the, the bottom of it, it's orange, orange, yellow, like a chartreuse yellow, and then blue on top. And then we got happy little toadstools. Inappropriate answers only would make that question so much more fun. Are you talking about Matthew McCluskey's beard oil or the jerk bait? That would be interesting. Uh, jo uh, Joseph uh, caught my PB largemouth on a KVD square black black back chartreuse. Love that Ooh. bait. It was August uh, through chocolate milk water two feet. Yeah, I mean, nice. Can we, uh, KV, striking crankbaits are weird. Like I have so many of them just because they're cheap and you can get a bunch of them, but they're really, well, they work. They work. They absolutely work. Um, Jeff, this has been an absolute fun stream and we're getting close to a record with how many people we have watching tonight. If people want to find you or they want to book a trip with you, how can they do that? You can go to SWFA That's my online store. And that also leads you to my tackle shop. There's an option on that website to uh, book a trip with me. You can also go to shallowwaterfishingadventures.net, and um, you can contact me from that um, from my uh, guide service website as well. Or you can just call me at 301-820-5378. Um, I I like it when people call. You can text me. You can um, you can message me from those websites, or you can also email me at shallowwaterfishingadventures at gmail.com. And then as always, guys, the next person to sign up for a Patreon will win a absolutely beautiful hand-painted glide bait. Oh. This is a blueback glide bait right here from Tiger Crankbaits. Again, the next Patreon supporter will win that. Jeff, hey, go. And also, real quick, um, if people don't know, I posted it on, on social media and um, online and other spots, but... Uh, all my tubes right now, my two and three quarter inch tubes, um, they're uh, three dollars and fifty cents a bag, and that sale ends um, the end of February. Guys, come on, come on, get with that right now. You really need to get with that. Um, Shallow Water Fishing Tackles—they have a great shop. So many baits that really are going to get you dialed into the Upper Potomac. And the last thing, as always, to recap: uh, uh, Tiger Crane Baits is now one of the sponsors of Fishing the DMV. If you're a Patreon supporter, you get ten percent off all their stuff. Go check out Patreon. So you can hey, check we need that to out. do a shop tour, man. You need to come over here. We're Once gonna be doing that too. Set up. Well, the weather's gonna be warming up. I got so many places I have to go this year. What I need to do is just quit my job and just fish full time. I think that would make life well, way easier we, for all we of need us. Need to do a little shop tour. I mean, it's not going to take real long, but. Um, uh, people can well, see what, uh, what I have, um, going on here, how I operate. Dude, we'll go fishing after. Yeah, we could do that, man. All right, guys, like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys next time on fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Aarons and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.